Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of What's That? Today's exciting topic, bespoke or custom buttons, and how you can take those custom buttons and actually associate sound files with them, either by clicking on them to trigger a sound over and over again, or by rolling over the caption or rolling over the button in order to create a sound uh, repeatedly. You can see here we have one whopping slide in our example for today. It is a little bit of the farm. I'm just going to switch here to Photoshop quick like to show you how we can create that bespoke button. So here we are in Photoshop and you can see that I have my image of the main background. I'm just going to quickly select the little piggy. Do, 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 those three different sections. You see that I've just used the marquee selection tool to select our little piggy and then control C to copy control N for a new one and then finally I'll say okay we've got a new file I paste it in there you can see layer one I'm gonna quick like go in and label layer one as our up state I might even label it underscore up remember that term up for later that's key to creating our custom buttons now I'm gonna duplicate this and when I do it, instead of calling it up copy, I'm going to call the next one over. And I'm going to duplicate it one more time. And instead of calling this one over copy, I'm going to call this one down. See that pattern? Underscore up, underscore over, underscore down. That's exactly how we're going to make Captivate make awesome custom buttons for us. So all I have to do now is fill the little piggy with a color. I'm just going to change my color chip here to a nice warm rosy pink color. That looks a little too purple for me. Let's find a nice pink color that looks like a nice pink color for our pig. And then I'm going to go here to the fill tool in Photoshop and just fill this area here with a little bit of the pink color. I like to differentiate just a little bit, so I'll come here to the color selection, get a slightly lighter color for that nose, and there we go. We've got a nice lovely pink. Now I can customize each of those colors one step at a time. To do that I can use filters inside of Photoshop. No trouble there. All I really have to do uh, is slightly change the color or the drop shadow or so forth and so on. Very common trick with buttons, but let's do it a slightly different way. Instead, let's actually use variations. So I'm going to go here to image and then adjustments and then variations, one of my favorite tools in Photoshop. Notice again, we're on the down layer. I'll click original just to make sure we're starting with the original image. I'm going to click on midtones to make sure we're adjusting the midtone colors. And then I want to make it darker in variations because this is the down state. So I'll make it darker and darker and darker. Notice I can compare the original to the current pick. Okay, awesome. Looks good. Everything is hunky-dory and happy. We've now made our three versions. All we have to do is save them. We just go to the File menu and then Save for Web and Devices. File Save for Web and Devices. Now, it's important to recognize that even though I have the up layer selected, all three are visible. So the one that is currently going out to save is the down version or the darker version. So I'm going to look here in my Export Save for Web and Devices. I click the Save button. And I want to save this as Pig very important part now pig underscore down pig underscore down this is the down image captivate's going to need that underscore down information okay now i make that one invisible and see what happens my over version becomes visible when i click off the little eyeball here so now file save for web and devices and then i'm ready to save again and i'm ready to save it as pig but what do I have to do? Underscore and over, because this is going to be the highlight, the rollover effect. Pig over, I make this one invisible, and then I go file, and then save for web and devices, and save. And you guessed it, it's going to be pig underscore up. Very important, this is the default state of the button. Pig underscore up. Now, all we have to do is switch over to Captivate. We're going to switch over to Captivate where we have our barnyard sounds piece all ready to go. You see I have a couple of buttons already in here, one for the cow and one for the sheep, but the pig does not have a button. I just highlighted him temporarily with this little polygon. I'm going to take that polygon away right now. All I'm going to do is delete it. Boom, it is gone. Okay, so now I'm going to click on the insert button, 
and a button comes in and you say wait oh holy cow that's a text button that's all kinds of things are wrong with that no problem all you have to do is come here to the button type and then choose image button that'll automatically change it to an image type button then see the little folder icon on the right hand side yep that's the one click on that folder icon and then we're browsing on my desktop I know it's a ping I've got to find the pig here's the pig remember which one's the default pig up okay now all you have to do is identify the up because Captivate is going to do all the work for you just pig up open okay and automatically look at that nicely in there the rollover states are already hot and active all I have to do is grab that button and line it up with my background image awesome we are ready to rock now we're going to make this into an actual sound generating element, right? One way to create sa sounds inside of the Captivate space is simply to add a rollover. And on that rollover, it can trigger an actual sound, right? So we can add a simple caption rollover, no problem. All we have to do is uh, insert a rollover text caption. That rollover text caption pops right into place like that. And you can see here's the text caption and the blue area is the rollover area we take the blue rollover area and we place it around our little piggy and that will define the area which is hot for a rollover space the text caption has to remain at least some part on the screen so we'll put it just a little bit over on the screen but we don't want to see it so we'll set it to transparent and we'll erase the text so it's invisible magic stealth text caption but it's right there if you lose it don't worry just click on the rollover area and it will appear while I've got the rollover area selected I am going to set the stroke to zero because I don't want to see any highlights around that rollover area no help for why or when we should be uh, clicking on that rollover area Now, when that rollover area goes it's going to trigger its success caption so we select the success caption and look over here on the right hand side that success caption has you guessed it it has audio all we have to do is add audio to the success caption and then anytime somebody rolls their mouse over that rollover area they're gonna hear that sound so click to add audio and I'll just record a little bit of audio can you believe it oh my gosh here we go Yep, that was me adding the pig sound audio. Looks like it's all good. We can play it back. Oh, fantastic. I'm going to clip away the front part of that. I'll go to the edit section, and I'll just clip away the front part of that because I don't need all that extra lead time. And I'm going to clip away the end part because that's probably me clicking or fussing or doing something crazy. I'll just clip that away as well. Now I save the audio when I'm done, and I am ready. I've saved the audio. I closed the audio everything is looking good okay now remember I've already done these two buttons but I did them in a slightly different way let's take a look here at how this project looks when I play it I'm gonna play back the project it advances forward we roll over that piggy and he makes a sound okay but I want a slightly different effect I actually want to be able to click on that pig and make him make the sound like the cow Or the sheep. So how can I do that? No problem. Well, there's actually an, a, a little bit of extra functionality called a widget that's been created by the folks at Info Semantics, and that widget can actually allow you to create a clickable area where you can have a repeating sound on a button or on anything for that matter so that's a really cool little thing I'm just gonna get rid of this rollover area here now that we've seen how to do it the rollover area is gone and let's add a button right or we are add a button but we're actually gonna add a widget so we want to go here to the widget and to the widget menu and here you can see I've got up already in the widget menu the info semantics event handler widget and I want to insert that event handler widget this thing is really cool let's take a look at it okay so we insert the event handler widget and up it comes now it is set up so that it can automatically work on any object on the screen just based on the name of the object well let's see what our object name is well our piggy button is actually called button 3 by default let's change it and we'll call it piggy okay so we changed its name to piggy just so it's easier for us to find and we'll go back in and one more time we'll just insert this info semantics uh, widget so in it goes 
And now we know what to call it, Piggy. And we want it to happen on the success criteria. Uh, we would like it to show the hand cursor. But we want to disable continue so that it doesn't go on automatically at the end. We want to reset the success failure criteria so that it can repeat over and over. And we want it to function on a mouse up. So we'll set those as the parameters. And we'll say, OK, that all looks good. Now, automatically, the widget is inserted into the space. You can see here it's kind of in the center of the space, covering everything up. I'm going to move it over to the right-hand side but still leave just a little overlapping onto the screen so that it still gets seen by Cal Cal Captivate's engine. Now, back to the property inspector. I'm just going to close our widget and open up the property inspector so we can see from the widget it has a success, a failure, and a hint caption. Well, we don't want the hint caption, and we don't want the failure caption. We only want the success caption. There it is a success caption that we're going to use to have our sound effect for the piggy. Now, same deal. I'm going to make that a stealth or transparent caption. I'm going to make the text inside the caption go away just as we did before. And now we've got this really cool little text caption that's ready to have audio. I'll click on add audio, but remember, I already recorded the audio. So all I have to do is go to the library. You can see here that I've got one, two, three. There is the wave I think it is. Let's play it. Yeah, that's definitely a pig. So I say, OK and then save and now that sound is associated with that particular event right okay so we should be good now we just click on preview project pull up our window have a look we've got cow sheep and piggy that's it for this time